Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and welcome to lecture 14 of Introductory Linear Algebra. In today's class, we're going to learn that every single linear transformation out there is actually just sort of a matrix in disguise. In other words, every linear transformation, it can be written as matrix times vector. Okay, so to sort of motivate this, remember back one of the first examples of a linear transformation that we saw was we saw that if A is any fixed matrix, then the function defined by, you know, sending V to A times V, where V is just some column vector, that function is a linear transformation. In other words, matrix multiplication is a linear transformation, right? If you just take a column vector and multiply it by a matrix, oh, that's a linear transformation. Well, now what we're gonna show is that every linear transformation has this form, okay? So no matter what linear transformation I give you, you can always find some matrix that does the same thing, okay? Some matrix such that that linear transformation just equals, you know, matrix times vector. All right, so let's see how this works. Let's be a little bit more precise now. Let's show the big beast of a theorem for today's class. So here's the setup. Suppose you've got some function sending n-dimensional space to m-dimensional space. Well, that function is a linear transformation if and only if there exists some matrix such that linear transformation applied to V equals matrix times V, where we're thinking of V over here as a column vector so that the matrix multiplication actually makes sense. Okay, funky square brackets around T, that just means whatever matrix makes this true. Okay, so this is just new notation that we're introducing for the matrix that does the same thing as T, okay? And we give a name to this matrix as well. We call it the standard matrix of that linear transformation T, okay? So to dwell just a little bit more on this equation over here, what this means is linear transformation applied to V equals matrix times V, okay? And the square brackets around T, again, that's just new notation for whatever matrix actually fits in this spot. Whatever matrix does the same thing as T itself. Okay, and a couple more remarkable things that we've sort of buried in this theorem here is, well, for one thing, this standard matrix of T, it's unique, okay? There's exactly one matrix that does the job. There's exactly one matrix with the property that this linear transformation does the same thing as the matrix, okay? And furthermore, we have an explicit formula for this matrix, okay? So if I give you some linear transformation T and say, hey, find me the standard matrix, find me the matrix that sort of does the same thing as this linear transformation, well, we have a formula for it, and here it is. So the way to construct the standard matrix of T is you apply T to each of the standard basis vectors, okay? And then stick the results in as columns into a matrix, okay? So you compute T of the first standard basis vector, T of E1, and then that becomes the first column of your standard matrix. And then T of E2, T of the second standard basis vector, that becomes your second column of the standard matrix, and so on, all the way down to the very last uh, standard basis vector, En, you compute T of it, and then that becomes the last column of your standard matrix. Okay, and then the claim is, what this theorem is saying is that if you construct this matrix, well, then applying T to a vector is the same as multiplying this matrix by that vector. Okay, you always get the same answer, no matter what vector V you choose. All right, so let's prove this big beast of a theorem now. Okay, and there, because this is an if and only if theorem, you have two things that you gotta prove, right? You gotta prove the if direction. So you've gotta show that, um, you know, if there is a matrix such that this happens, then it's a linear transformation. So we've gotta show that if there's some matrix, square brackets around T, such that this equality holds, then T is a linear transformation. And actually we already did that. We did that last class when we showed that any function of this form is a linear transformation. Okay, so we already did the if direction. We've also got to do the only if direction. So we've got to show that if T is a linear transformation, then, then T of V equals standard matrix times V. We've got to show that that's true. Okay, so how do we do that? Let, let's do that now. All right, so what we're gonna to do to start is we're gonna just plug in the definition of everything. We wanna show that standard matrix of T times V equals T of V. Okay, we'll just plug in the definition. What is standard matrix of T? I just scroll up a little bit. Ah, standard matrix of T equals this junk over here. So I'm just going to plop that in. And then what is V? Well, that's just, you know, V as a column vector. Like I'm just thinking of V as a column vector. I'm going to write these little green bars here, though, just because I want to partition it in some way so that I can do this block matrix multiplication. Okay, so I've got N columns here, N block columns. So I want to have N block rows here. So that's just how I'm partitioning it so that the block matrix multiplication will work in this next step. 
All right, now I wanna multiply these out. Like I just said, that's block matrix multiplication. So I'm gonna get T of E1 times V1 plus T of E2 times V2, all the way up to plus T of EN times VN. And then I'm just gonna put the Vs out in front because those are scalars, so I can compute them past the T of Es. Okay, so I just get V1 times T of E1 plus T V2 times T of E2 and so on down the line. So that's just block matrix multiplication. We learned that last week. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna use the fact that it's a linear transformation. I haven't actually done that yet. I haven't used the fact that it's a linear transformation anywhere yet, I'm gonna do it now. And what that's gonna let me do is it's gonna let me pull these Vs inside of T. I can pull V1 inside of T of E1. I can pull V2 inside of T here. I can pull Vn inside there. And then I can pull all these sums inside as well. Remember linear transformations, they're exactly the functions that preserve linear transformations. Sorry, they're the functions that preserve linear combinations. Okay, so then I've just got the entire linear combination on the inside of T now, and that's valid because T is a linear transformation. Okay, and then I just look at this, and this is just my standard way of breaking down a vector into a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, right? V of E1, remember that puts V1 in the first entry of the vector, plus V2 times E2, that puts V2 in the second entry of the vector, all the way up to Vn times En, that puts Vn in the last entry of the vector. So in other words, this linear combination inside here that's just V. So this whole thing is just T of V. Okay, and then I'm done. That's what I wanted to show. I've got matrix times vector equals linear transformation applied to vector. That's what I wanted to show, right? So I've just shown that, yeah, if T is a linear transformation, then this thing here is true. Great, so I've proved the if, if, if direction. I've proved the only if direction. There's actually one extra thing that I've got to prove here. The extra thing that I haven't justified yet is uniqueness. I have not shown that there's only one matrix square brackets around T that works here. I've not, I've, I've not yet shown that there's only one standard matrix for a linear transformation. So let's do that now. Okay, so we also need to show uniqueness of the standard matrix. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is suppose that I've just got some matrix such that T of V equals A times V. Okay, and my goal is to show that this matrix must be the standard matrix, okay? Because that'll show uniqueness. That'll show there's really only one matrix that works because every matrix with this property must be the standard matrix. Okay, so how do I do that? How do I show that A must be the standard matrix? Okay, well, my goal is to show that A must have this formula here. I want to show that A, you know, equals this thing over here. In other words, I want to show that the first column of A is T of E1. I want to show the second column of A is T of E2 and so on. Well, what happens if I multiply A by a standard basis vector? Okay, so I just fix some J, that's gonna tell me what standard basis vector I'm talking about, and I compute A times EJ. Okay, well, if you just sort of play around with matrix multiplication a little bit, in particular, I mean, this fact can be proved with block matrix multiplication, very similar to what we did here. If you ever take a matrix and multiply it by the Jth standard basis vector, that always picks off exactly the jth column of that matrix. So A times EJ is the jth column of A. Okay, and that doesn't have anything to do with, with linear transformations or anything like that. That's just a basic fact about matrices, okay? So just sort of run through the matrix multiplication here and try to convince yourself of this fact. A times EJ is the jth column of A. Okay, well that means like if I choose V equals EJ up here, then I get jth column of A over here, and over here on the left, I get T of EJ. Okay, so T of EJ has to equal the Jth column of A. So T of EJ must equal the Jth column of A, which is just another way of saying that A has this formula over here, right? For every J, the Jth column of A equals T of EJ, right? The first column equals T of E1, the second column equals T of E2, and so on. Okay, so we basically just said in words that you know, this matrix A, yeah, it's the standard matrix. It's that matrix that we already defined and we're talking about earlier. Okay, so if ever you have a matrix that has this property here, then yeah, it's gotta be the standard matrix. So the standard matrix is unique. All right, and that's it, then we're done. We finally proved that theorem. Okay, so let's just run through a couple examples of finding the standard matrix of a linear transformation and trying to sort of pin down our intuition for this, really trying to convince ourselves that this is true and trying to understand a little bit better exactly what it means. So let's come up with a couple linear transformations and then we'll find the standard matrices of them. All right, so to start, linear transformation on two-dimensional space, and it's defined just in this way. This is a linear transformation we've seen a couple times now. It just sends V1, V2 to V1 minus V2, V1, V2. V1 plus V2. All right, so how do we find the standard matrix? Well, what you do is the first thing 
you compute t of e1 and t of e2. So let's start off with t of e1. And well, what is e1? Well, it's just the vector 1, 0, because it's in two-dimensional space, so there's only two entries. All right, and then we just plug 1, 0 into the formula here. So it's going to be 1 minus 0, 1 plus 0. So it'll just be 1, 1. All right, so t of e1 is 1, 1. Great. Now we need t of e2. We need to know what it does to the other standard basis vector. And remember, e2 is just the vector 0, 1. Okay, the one's in the second entry now. All right, and again, you just plug that in here, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this time you're going to get minus 1, 1 as your output vector. All right, now what do you do with those once you've got them? Well, remember the theorem says you take these vectors and stick them as columns into some matrix. All right, so standard matrix equals T of all of the standard basis vectors stuck in as columns. So T of E1 becomes the first column. So the first column is 1, 1, and then T of E2 minus 1, 1, that's our second column, all right? So 1, 1 comes from here, minus 1, 1 comes from over here. Okay, and that's it, okay? If the question is, find me the standard matrix, then this is the final answer. So the claim is that this matrix sort of does the same thing as this linear transformation. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's just sort of verify what we mean by that. The claim is, if I ever take a vector and multiply it by this matrix, I get the same thing as if I apply this linear transformation to it. Okay, so here, this is the standard matrix I just computed. Let's multiply it by some vector and see what we get. So let's, in other words, let's compute standard matrix times B. Well, what do we get? We just do our matrix multiplication, right? One minus one dotted with V1, V2. So we're gonna get V1 minus V2 in the top entry. And then one, one dotted with V1, V2. In other words, V1 plus V2 in the second entry. Okay, so when we did the matrix multiplication, we got this vector here, okay? And then we just squint really hard and we see, oh, this vector, what's the relationship between this vector and this vector? Well, they're the same thing. They're just sort of written in a slightly different way. One of them's just written as a vector, the other one's written as a column vector, but they're the same thing. They have the same entries, right? So these, these are the same. That's what we mean by matrix times vector equals linear transformation applied to vector, okay? All the entries are the same, that matrix does the same thing that the linear transformation does. All right, let's do another example, okay? Let's do an example with different input and output dimensions, just to make sure that we understand how things line up. So this time we've got a linear transformation going from two-dimensional space to three-dimensional space, and I've just defined this ugly little thing over here. So there are two input variables, right? The input vector is two-dimensional, it has two entries, so there, I've just called them X and Y. And then the output has three entries, right? Because it's going to three-dimensional space. So x plus 2y, 3x mi minus 7 quarters y, and then pi times x. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is, I just tried to make it a little bit ugly. All right, first part, we're going to construct the standard matrix, and then we're going to sort of tr try to convince ourselves that, yeah, that standard matrix does the same thing as the linear transformation. So to construct the standard matrix, do t of standard basis vectors. So t of e1, in other words, t of 1, 0, is what? Well, just plug in x equals 1, y equals 0 into this formula here. You're going to get 1, 3, and pi. 1, 3, and pi. That's your output vector if you plug in that input vector. Next up, t of e2. So this time we're plugging in 0, 1, right? Remember, e2 is the vector 0, 1. So this time we're going to get 2 minus 7 quarters and 0. There is no y term in this third entry, so we get a 0 there. All right, great. Now we know what T of the standard basis vectors are. Stick those into a matrix as columns, and that's your standard matrix. So first column is T of E1, second column is T of E2, which will be this guy, and you just throw those in and you get some matrix. Okay, so one, three pi is coming from there. Two minus seven quarters and zero is coming from there. All right, and that's it, that's your standard matrix. Okay, notice this time the standard matrix is not square. Okay, and that corresponds to the fact that the input and output dimensions are different. The input dimension corresponds to how many columns there are, okay? There are two columns here because the input dimension was two. There are three rows here because the output dimension was three, okay? So the columns, in a sense, correspond to the inputs. Rows correspond to the outputs. All right, and then to round this example out, let's just really try to convince ourselves of you know, what this example is doing, of what this matrix is doing. So what happens if I do this matrix times some vector? What if I do matrix times vector with this matrix? Well, then I get you know 
this over here, just plugging in my matrix. And then I've called the entries of the vector X and Y, just so that they match up a little bit with uh, what's up there. Okay, it doesn't matter what you call them, but I'm just trying to be consistent. Okay, and then if I do that matrix multiplication, what happens is I get one, two dotted with X, Y, so X plus two Y in the top entry, and then three minus seven quarters dotted with X, Y, in the second entry, and then pi zero dotted with x, y in the third entry. And then again, just like last time, if you squint really hard at t standard matrix times v, and also t of v, you'll notice that, hey, these are the same thing, right? The first entry is x plus two y. Second entry is three x minus seven quarters y. And third entry is pi times x, okay? So they're the same thing, just like before. And that's what we mean by standard matrix does the same thing as a linear transformation, okay? And maybe one thing that's worth observing here, sort of a shortcut, if you will, for constructing these standard matrices is notice that if you just read off the coefficients of the input variables, right? Coefficient here is one and then two. Oh, those are the entries of the first row of the standard matrix, one and then two. And then three minus seven quarters. Oh, those are the coefficients in the second row of the standard matrix. And then pi, and there's like a plus zero y in that third entry pi and zero are the, the entries in the third matrix, third row of that standard matrix. Okay, so if you just sort of read off the coefficients in your linear transformation and put them into a matrix row by row, then you'll get the correct standard matrix. Okay, so that's another way to go about computing it, if you like. All righty, so that'll do it for today. Next class, we're gonna go over just a whole boatload of examples of linear transformations. And sort of we're gonna focus on linear transformations that are sort of very geometrically motivated. So sort of defined in terms of what they do to vectors geometrically. So I'll see a bunch of examples next class. I'll see you then for that.